And we are live. Hello, everyone. We are at our five o'clock hour. So excited for this. One of our favorite, Love More, is coming on. Dr. Bruce Purnell. Dr. Bruce, you were on time today. You're not even playing. So I got to add you on here. Oh, and you already sent me the request. Thank you. Hello. David Miller is on. Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce, look at that hair. <laughs> I know, like, sometimes I don't see it, so I see myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it got long. That means your wisdom is growing. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I got wisdom too. <laughs> that's right, that's right, that's right. Aw, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. You were uh, even on early. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you know, yeah, hey, yeah, I was looking forward to this. Anytime you get to connect with Black Mental Health Alliance, that's my family. Like, I, yeah, I look forward. It's like a reunion every time I see y'all. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, wow. We have a lot of different people on WPGC, um, Unchanged Now. That's David Miller. He'll be on later. Unapologetic. Oh, that's my Thank yeah. you for joining joining us. Yes, and I can't wait for you guys to talk about the different things you're doing. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to let you guys lift that up for the men and boys summit that we're having in June. Fairy Dust, thank you for joining us. So, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Roxana Feenster. I'm with the Black Mental Health Alliance. And today we're, we've taken over Instagram and instead of seeing Tom <laughs> Foolery, you're going to see different mental health topics all around mental health awareness. Today is the last day of mental health awareness month. And um, when we came up with the idea, we just wanted to make sure that people got different tools in their toolkits so that when you're going through these different mental health um, challenges, crisis, if you have a diagnosis, there's always ups and downs. It's never just, oh, I'm always going to be healthy. Um, so we just knew that we had gurus that had a lot of things that they've already mastered, right? That's why I have to say gurus, people that have shown and proven that they have mastery. Um, it was funny because my son was talking about, um, how how many hours you have to actually do to be a master at a topic and for him he was talking about coding so he was like you know mom you gotta sit there you gotta for hours 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 and i just think like when you have people that are life coaches that are therapists what are all the things they have to go through to get mastery right and it's stuff that we can't calculate so um when we come across those people i think we have to make sure we're leaning in and learning from them. I think I don't think there's ever been a talk that you've left me and I've been the same way. I always learn and glean something from you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, man. And you know what I'm thinking about? I'm just now starting to do, I, I don't know where my phone is, to show you proof that I have like affirmations that I walk and listen to. And I was thinking, do you have an affirmation thing? Like, that should be something that you tell us the healing affirmations and we can pay, download it, and listen to that on a walk or something. Oh, wow. That, that's a great idea. Those, we, 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 we put them out every day. Uh, Sister Sonia, she sends it out to the whole network every day. It's an affirmation for the day. But at the end of this cycle, like, we're going to put out, like, the book, What It Means to Believe in Butterflies is going to come out, mm -hmm. the curriculum, the affirmation book. So we got a lot happening in, 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 in this next, this next uh, three or four months. And you put music to the affirmations. I know you had done <laughs> right. that before in the past, and it touched me. So I think you guys have to package that, that positiveness to share out because it's, it's people that aren't going to be able to go to your circles are you back to in person some like okay. some like still more virtual i guess after building that virtual brave space i know it's like you don't want to <laughs> give it up almost like because it's, it, 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 it's so much easier and so many more people can come in to the space so 
we got to figure that piece yeah. out. But we still love to meet in person and see each other. Like, that's just who we are. And you have such a great, close-knit group. Oh, yeah. We're getting bigger, too. Like, we're getting bigger. That's, and, and that's the piece, too. Like, we want this to become contagious. The other side of it, because a lot of times in mental health, we'll focus so much on the triggers to trauma that we miss the triggers to joy. Yeah. And we can identify the pain. We've been identifying the pain since we've been in this country. Like, it's been about identifying the pain. We can call it whatever you want to call it. Like, we've been getting whipped since we've been here. But the idea of how do we get out of this? Like, how, how, what is that pathway to joy? Like, you know, and as we start to really talk about affirmations, but even before the affirmations, the believing in the affirmations. So, you know, for, for it to manifest, we got to believe, like we got to be able to believe and to believe we got to heal from this past trauma to be able to believe because like, you know, what are promises to people that uh, have experienced broken, broken promises for 500 years? Mm -hmm. What's the next promise? Yeah. And and how do you really become, to start to really believe in what's next? Like, and how do you get to the point where you know you don't have to go through anybody else to get back to yourself? Mm. Like, you know, you don't have to go through anybody to get back. Like, we don't have to get permission to love each other. Because they showing us something else. Like, and, and we kind of bind in what they showing us. They showing mm. us that we don't love each other. We really love each other. Like, you know, and there's no way that we've been through all that we've been through. Anybody should be able to tell us we don't love each other we don't trust each other we've been through too much to uh, accept that narrative yeah and so the awesome richard rowe has um joined us yeah he is our black mental health alliance consultant he also was a um not a founding member but an executive director he was our board president because he loved us so much as a community um, that has really poured in a lot of work into um, Black Mental Health, the nonprofit, but also Black Mental Health as in our whole community. So thank you for joining us, Richard. Glad to be back. Glad to join you all. <laughs> listening to you all now. I think you all have already basically solved the problem. No, don't say that. <laughs> I can't, I can't get off this call and wait for the next one. No, no, no. But it's, it's a pleasure and an honor to be in you all space. Dr. Uh, Purnell, of course, Brother Bruce, is not only a confident, confidant, but he is an amazing, an amazing thinker, uh, a mental health uh, expert on a number of topics, and a joy to really be around, to be with. He and I have done some sessions together he and i've had private conversations he and i have basically um done some interesting work together and looking forward to doing more work together on a number of uh, critical issues and topics and so brother bruce is always an honor and a pleasure man to be in your space likewise you, know, you already know, <laughs> know and, and to hear from you because see you bringing solutions man you're bringing a different narrative you call it you know, a frequency, a different frequency mm -hmm. that we need to basically tune into a different program, if you will, uh, because we've been programmed to really think uh, uh, not highly of ourselves, but think just the opposite. Mm -hmm. We've been programmed to, to do tricks and to, and to be tricked by those who have oppressed us for hundreds of years and are still trying to tell us what to do, when to do it, uh, what time to arrive and what time to leave. And so we got to basically change the programming, change the narrative, and who better else can help us do that than one of our preeminent psychologists, a thought leader, and a subject matter expert for uh, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, uh, and the American Psychological Association, and, and Black Men Health Alliance. So he, he, he brings a lot, especially, to, thank you, Brother Bruce, for being one of our subject matter experts yes. and one of our lead trainers, yes. brother. When we call on him, he answers the call. So Roxanne, you know how much we love him, how much we appreciate him. <laughs> and I want to say that, you know, in, out, I mean, in public, yeah. because again, we, we wait sometimes until it's too late yeah. to thank those and to give credit to those that are committed to our people, committed to our overall mental health, our optimal mental health, not just our mental health, but our optimal mental health and our healing. And he's a brother who has said to me, I keep asking him, Brother Bruce, 
is love going to win out? And of course, you know, he has, is the founder of the Love More movement. So you know he's committed to love winning uh, in a climate of hate, despair, hopelessness, sadness, and all the things that really can take the people out. Brother Bruce, again, that's a that's a brief intro to you. Oh, if if I said I didn't do it, I'm just, that's a brief intro yes. to you. It would take it's been all more time over to the world. All over the world. That's right. He's all over the world. He's, yeah. he's, well, he's a descendant. Tell, tell me, Brother Bruce, tell, tell us again, our, our, our listeners. You are a descendant again of what, brother? Of, yeah, of the underground station masters station. Uh, and conductors of the underground railroad. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And and again, an artist, a speaker, an artist, community activist. Again, the list is long, you all. Yeah. So, rather than to spend all our time introducing this this, this great <laughs> mind and this great brother, let us get into a few topics that we you know can share uh, insights, illuminate, and elevate. The conversation about some of the more, more critical topic, more critical issues. So, Brother Bruce, you know, I think the topic that we were going to um, focus on was healing through affirmations. Now, we don't have to spend all of our time there uh, because you can connect the dots. But healing through affirmations, why don't we start there? What does that mean to you? And then we can expand on this conversation to include. Uh, a session that you will be doing for us in late June uh, around the butterfly metaphor, mm -hmm. which is so powerful. So I really want to touch on that as well. But let's start off as because Roxanne, as you know, healing is our thing. Healing is what we are, want to be known for. Uh, we want to advocate. Health. We want to promote. We want that's right. Alpha mental health and healing, because we know it. Brother Bruce has said, you know, 400, 500 years of what? A trauma. A trauma. And if a yeah. people is yeah. not placing healing at the top of the priority list, then I'm just not sure if we're going to be able to make it through. That's right. And and, and Brother Bruce is clear about that. We won't make it through. Not, if we don't really lift up and talk about <laughs> the healing. So, Brother Bruce, I've said too much. I've said a lot. I'm going to start off with you. No, you and thank you to our listening audience for joining us in this in this, this uh, session that we are conducting this afternoon. And thank again, Roxana, you, the Black Men Health Alliance, for taking us on a marathon, Brother Bruce, all day long. I know that's lifting up right, the right. and lifting up our mental health and well-being as a critical, critical place to begin and not to end, but to begin and to continue focusing our attention on our overall mental health. So, Brother Bruce, healing through affirmations, brother. Talk to uh, us about yeah. that. Right, and thank you so much no we we need to be on all day every day but that is. healing piece like as you talked earlier about the uh the vibration so our latest piece is the fevers right the frequency of love and more the energy of joy the vibration of hope the uh, elevation of peace the reflection of divine purpose and the scope of forgiveness Right, mm -hmm. all of those like so we we have a, a a piece and it's all connected to a vibration and an energy, right? So, if we understand that our body is no more than a machine that allows our spirit to experience the physical world, we can start to actually see a more see a reality from a spiritual eyes. Like you say, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, not human beings having a spiritual experience. So, mm -hmm. spirit is real and the illusions coming from the world, that's not, they're not even real, like, but, you know, it's like, once you plug in, it's real, because through perception, it becomes real. So these affirmations, right, they're so important because, well, one, it changes, it, it changes that vibration. So you, you talking about changing the frequencies, like we say, like, look, if we don't like, if you got in your car and you cut on the radio and you didn't like it was playing, you would turn the station, right? If you say, Sat down in your favorite chair and you cut on the TV. You ain't like what was on. You would change the channel. So why don't we? Why don't we feel that we had the power to change the channel in our own lives, right? With our families, in our communities. If we don't like what's playing, why can't we change the channel? And the reason is because we plugged into an energy that's convincing us that we don't have the power to change the channel in our own in our own lives. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we feel we have to go through them to get back to us. So the affirmations breaks that. Like, but we have to believe in the affirmation. That's how it works. Like to manifest, to know that you can think and manifest whatever it is you think, it becomes real if you believe it. So if you don't 
can believe the affirmation, then how can it manifest if you don't believe it? And to believe it, we got to heal. We have to heal because, like, you know, the uh, Roxanne and I was talking earlier about the, the promise. Like, so the idea, because, you know, as you make affirmation, you're making a promise, right, to the universe. This this piece, like, like you know, it's a it's a covenant that's being made. Like so, mm -hmm. if you if, if your experience has been a bunch of broken promises, and that's all you really know, like you know the disappointment of people not keeping their word, it's hard for you to actually really believe that. Okay, like who is is the universe gonna keep its word to me? You know, a lot, a lot of times we don't trust God for real. Like we we really you know we say we want to, and we probably won't even share that we don't, but. If you if we did, we would we would believe that you know we can actually change this piece. Like you know the idea that mm -hmm. you know something has so much power over us that we're immobilized to move. So like we talk about Shamu, the the killer whale being in the pool. Like so if you don't know the ocean's your home, your ask is for a bigger pool and more fish. You don't know that the ocean's your home, right. Mike. You know so. We're in that situation, so we, you know, it's a lot like that comes to consciousness. Like Marcus Garvey says, like if we don't know who we are, we're like a tree without roots. And what is a tree without roots? Like you know, so we, we, you know, we're gonna take ground wherever we can just to survive. And no, okay, so stop, stop, stop there, brother. Wait, stop, stop <laughs> there, because that, that so powerful. Now we got to stop there. Bro. We got to pause and unpack what you just shared, because yeah. again, you, you've shared so much in in, in the few minutes that you have. Began to begin talking, and I guess, Brother Bruce, again, you said to believe. If you believe, you can heal, but to also know, to know what you need to know, you know, uh, is is very very important. I mean, in fact, to heal is predicated on knowing what you need to know and what has happened to you. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, we ignore or we are reluctant to really you know, deal with, with, with the issues of what has, what has happened to us historically and contemporarily. So before you continue your powerful presentation, brother, on affirmations, man, let's, let's pause and talk about what you think we should know as a people to, heal, to really heal this time around. Mm -hmm. What should we know and, and how should we go about knowing what we need to know so that we can do what we need to do? Okay. The first piece is what, what we need to know, that we're valuable enough to love and be loved. We're valuable enough to atone, forgive, heal, grow, thrive, and transform, that we don't have to be extras in, in our own movie because we're stars. Our ancestors are the director and our creators the producer, right? That, that we need to know that we, our history goes past slavery. Like, you know, like, you know, we, Healing is in our DNA. Love is in our DNA. Like we have a history. Our history is just, just not trauma. Our history is love and healing. Like you know, because it's it's no way, it's no way that a people that have been through what we've been through could love today if we if the core of us wasn't love. It's mm. no way, man. Like we've been through the Middle Passage. We've been through slavery. We've been through post Reconstruction Jim Crow. We've been through dogs and hoses being sicked on our women and children during the Civil Rights Movement. We've been through the assassination of our leaders. We've been through the, 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 the war on drugs, the prison industrial complex, the new Jim Crow. We've been through the era of gentrification and being marginalized and labeled as being mentally ill. Mm. We've been through all, we're survivors. Like it's a miracle we're here today talking about this. Mm. So that's the premise. We're a miracle. Like that's the very premise. We're a miracle. Like, and we deserve, like we have a birthright to be happy. It's not about identifying the pain. We have a birthright to be in a state of joy as the norm. Yeah, every moment's not going to be a happy moment, but we have a birthright right to expect to be in a in, in a state of joy as a norm our children have a right to smile as a norm <clears throat> not trying to avoid the next we have to treat teach our children or raise our children to avoid the next traumatic episode right. nah mm -hmm. like you know that's not it walking on eggshells out here is not it compromised humanity is not it like so once we get all that out <clears throat> the way <laughs> then then we can start say okay now let, let's heal let's release this past stuff and decide, like, you know, how are we going to create our new community, the new Garden of Eden? What does that look like? Like, what is the new Garden of Eden, like, that we're going to live in? 
-hmm. you know, what, what kind of, what are we going to put in the baby food even to, because we know we're developing the taste of our children, but what we're giving the baby, what are we going to do? Like, how are we going to eat? How are we going to think? How are we going to show that we love each other? Like, how do we, you know, so that's, that's a piece of understanding, like our roots and who we are. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, giving homage to our ancestors that fought for our liberation. Like, we got to be there. Like, we got political prisoners still in jail. We don't even know their names. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we need to mm -hmm. know who we are mm -hmm. and celebrate the struggle for liberation because that's who we are. Like, it's, it's nobody more magnificent than us on this planet. We need, we need to know that. Like, yeah. if we start there, then now we can move to even the affirmations that we form. Like, you know, when, yeah. that, you know what are the affirmations? What's the ask? Like, what are we asking the universe for us? What are we asking right now? Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. And Roxana, don't hesitate to chime in when you want to lift up <laughs> the question for Brother Bruce. Because, you know, we only have a few minutes on the day. I know. I, I was just listening. Okay, I'm going to focus. Um, okay. So, We Love More said, will the universe let me down? Oh, the will the universe let me down based off my past experiences? 100%. So, we can't just stay looking back. Um, L. Johnson said, teach brother. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Andrea said, indeed, we have to believe we can heal a birthright. And she said, dang, you came out swinging. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you did. And we know he would. Yes, we know he would. But, but, uh, but, but again, Brother Bruce and, and Roxanne may have some more uh, comments to share, man, but because I know we're limited with time, you know, the, the, the key to all of this is how do we really take everything that you have shared and um, make certain that we have the right infrastructure or the right or the capacity to really sustain mm -hmm. the message that you are sharing. And so many of our iconic uh, Black uh, leaders, African leaders, man, of the past have basically placed in the playbook. Mm -hmm. But how do we really, really, this time around, Bruce, I mean, again, you may not be able to give all the answers today, uh, but your thoughts, man, on how you feel, because I know you're doing some serious trainings, you know, that, you know, are not just one or two in duration, but are six, six months, a year, which I think is critical for us to really Mm -hmm. uh, you know, provide our people with the with the skill sets and with the knowledge that you are expressing and that you are talking about. So we've got to we can't do it in our public schools, and we know we can't because they are under attack. We we got to do some of this in our homes. We know that because that's the first place, the most one of the most sacred places where we can do some of this uh, uh, messaging and changing the programming and the frequency down. But your your thoughts on how how do you see? Well, what do you think we need to have in place in order to really sustain this kind of this kind of a sharing uh, 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 or, or uh, making certain that we are aware of the things that you're talking about? Yeah, I think like initially, like so, uh, we we can't move without purpose, and we're not going to have a purpose without identity. So it it all goes it, it goes together. Like we, we we're trying to figure this education piece out but we don't have a purpose for our children. So mm. how do you develop a curriculum when you don't have a purpose for the, you don't have a purpose for your children? Like, it's like, uh, well, we don't, we thought they was going to figure it out. No, no, they weren't. <laughs> they were never going to figure that out. So, you know, so right. it's, it's, it's some key pieces like to really understand. And, and so if you know that we each, each and every one of us have a divine gift, right? They always prove the multiple intelligences piece. So we know it's not just one intelligence, right? We have multiple gifts, a, a whole array of, of things. And uh, and like uh, Sister uh, Ayana says, like, uh, we the change we've been waiting for, like, all the time. It's like, oh, look, like, we have to know that we already have everything we need, you know? So that, you know, it's, it's some foundational pieces that we have to we have to get. And we're going to go through a healing piece to understand that. Right. Like, because we've been, like, you know, we're – we're our our normal mode like from the from the plantation to now is trying to avoid the next whipping no shade mm -hmm. man it makes sense like mm -hmm. look like you know what's going to happen somebody's gonna get whipped so one you try to avoid it and then when somebody gets whipped or somebody gets hanged or somebody gets like, whatever happens then you come together to try to soothe that piece but not it doesn't change the, the scenario that is it's going to happen again right so mm -hmm. 
when we move out of that frame, which comes through the hill and we release that piece and understand that, no, like, you know, we're not, we're not going to accept, you know, uh, our ask isn't for a more comfortable plantation. Our ask is just liber liberation only. We're not selling for anything outside of liberation. Well, then, then we, we can kind of develop our premise and our purpose, like how are we going to move forward? And that's how we start. We start with, uh, you know, and connecting our we, like, you know, we need to know that we are a we. You know, uh, sometimes it's hard to put your finger on, well, who we, who, where, where, where does we exist? Right. Like, you know, so we got to know that we're we, like from shared experience and a history of liberation, being on the journey for liberation, the pathway to freedom was, it wasn't a pathway to see how much paper money we could get. We was on a pathway to liberation and we need to get rerouted back into that, you know, the very essence of, 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 of what the whole journey was about. Right. Talk, if you will, about talk, if you will, for a minute about the importance of love, brother. Because again, that's what this is really all about, too. You love more movement, man. And I know for a fact that you know there's a. I think Dr. Cornell West reminds us that if you don't love the people, you can't lead the people, and if you don't, hey. if you don't serve the people, you can't save the people, man. So we need people who understand that. We need organizations that understand if you don't love the people, you cannot lead the people. You started, your name of your organization is the Love More Movement. You were talking about another program. You were talking about a movement. So a minute or two on that topic of love, man, the, the significance, the importance of a, a um, of loving ourselves at the highest level and then loving our people, man, uh, uh, as well. That's the, that's the good news. The that's good, the good news, news is man. that... The good news is that the power, the energy of love can transform every other energy, right? When light shows up, dark has to go away, right? Because mm. dark and light can't exist in the same space at the same time. So when you show up with that light energy, darkness has to go away. And that's the, that's kind of like, you know, that's the, the reason why love wins, love heals all wounds, love, you know, conquers all. So we love more. Like our elders show us all the time, like, you know, we just got to love more, like, you know, not whip more. We need to love more. Mm. And, you know, so, mm. and that's, and, and that's the piece, that's the key, man. Like, you know, we've been, we've been taught to, uh, that to raise our children through forced compliance because we you know we're trying to keep them away from the whipping right so it's not about mm -hmm. innovation it's not about learning it's not about freedom it's about doing what somebody tells you to do if not you're gonna get punished so we gotta once we move around that know that no we're 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 out to discover your divine gifts your divine purpose like it's a divine reality right that's connected to love the foundation is love and it's not coming through a lens of love no it's wrong Whatever it is, like if you don't feel love with, within it, like then no, no, that is off. It's off somewhere, like you know. So, so that's that's the piece. That's what keeps me going. I know love wins. Love right. wins, man. It just wins when it when it shows up, man. Like everybody knows what it is. Yeah. Like, people trying to buy their way to get it, but you can't buy your way for it. Like it's a it's, right. the energy doesn't allow that. Like you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a deep seated piece in our DNA. And we tap into it. That is the secret. That's like the uh, the portal. The secret portal to happiness is actually that, and we have it inside of us. Mm -hmm. mm. We can't win without love. That's from David Miller. Yep. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? And there's so many other affirmations. There's so many, so many things that, that this brother. I mean, he's dropping gems all the time. It's Roxana and I and, and Andrew, and we all know. Uh, from listening to this brother man because you know he has a special presentation that takes us on this journey with the uh, wizard of oz the yellow brick road and and so many other you know places where we can park ourselves and learn yeah. from the lessons that uh, emanate from those movies from those uh, documentaries programs whatever you want to call them he's always extracting from those uh, powerful messages that we could all benefit from. So brother, and, 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 and listening audience, you know, this is just a, a wetting your appetite in terms of what he will be bringing and always brings to the uh, location, no matter if it's virtual or in person. Mm -hmm. He will be with us on June 28th and June 29th for our uh, uh, mental health summit for black men and boys. And he will be talking about a powerful um, uh, topic I think the title was What It Means to Believe in Butterflies, mm. um, yeah. a journey of healing and transformation. Uh, 
I think I, I have that right, brother. That's Again, right. I've heard Roxanne and I know we've heard some of that from you before. But I just want our audience to know that if you want to hear more in depth, and that won't even be in depth, we, we need him, like, you know, we know for hours on hours to really, really, you know, bring, you know, clarity to some of the issues that, uh, that we are confronted with. But, Brother Bruce, that topic right there, you know, um, you know, this whole notion, what it means to believe in butterflies. Yeah. Take a minute or two, talk about why you chose that as a metaphor and what it means for us to believe you know in butterflies so yeah so you know the the caterpillar is probably the, one of the most uh vulnerable uh entities on the planet like right so the the idea that uh, a caterpillar is going to become a butterfly first and we our ability to perceive a caterpillar as a future butterfly because it's not, we'll step on a caterpillar. We'll spray insecticide. It's a spurry worm eating my our plants. Not understanding. <laughs> so we'll we'll celebrate the beauty of a butterfly without understanding the journey of a caterpillar. So yeah. what if we saw our children as future butterflies? Wouldn't we protect their journey and be excited about what they ought to become? Would they have anything to worry about? Like if we knew that, right? If what if we saw them as future kings and queens? Like, would we protect it? Like, would we be excited about them? Mm. Right. So the idea first, and then on the other side, would I go into a cocoon where I got to deal with my past trauma if I didn't believe I was going to come out flying? Wow. Mm. Love enough to enter your cocoon for transformation, and. And so that's what the whole piece is about. Like, so, you know, because young people say all the time, like, why would I sacrifice a present for a future that I, that I don't believe right. in? So, so I'm not willing to jump through your hoops because I don't even believe you at this point. Like, that, you know, why? I don't like, believe in so, the future. Wow. Wow. So, wow. So we're going to develop that why. Like, you know, why? Because you have a birthright to transformation. We're going to identify your gifts and we're going to show you how to activate your gifts on this planet. You're not going to worry about money because when you're doing what you love to do, right. you're going to be great at it. Uh, I, 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 unfortunately, Roxanne, I think we have to end on that note because we have. <laughs> you know, I hate to do that, but, but my man, Brother Bruce, Dr. Bruce Purnell, it has been an honor and a pleasure, okay. brother, to be in your space once again. And we know that uh, we have more to um, to look for from you, not just at our convening in late June but also in, in the immediate and the near future, man, because, again, you are committed to us. You're committed oh, to yeah. this world, committed to our people, man. We love you, appreciate you, man. As you always say to me every time we talk, love more, Richard. You know, <laughs> <laughs> love, love more. more. Love more. Okay, love more Thank you. Please, please be safe, man. You, any, any, any last comment you want to share before we go? Anything else? Just, just thank y'all. Like, one, thank y'all for being the Black Women Help Alliance for being family, one. Cause mm. we all need family out here, like you know. So yeah. to know, like we have a place as family, and thank y'all for caring enough to really dig deep, like and take deep dives into creating that foundation mm. that we need to build off of. We appreciate that, my man. And we didn't, we didn't tell you to say that either. We didn't, we didn't tell you to say that. <laughs> so, so, so from the heart, brother, from the heart, the spirit and the soul. Thank you, brother. That's Be right. safe out there, thank man. You. Be I well, and we will. We'll be talking to you again soon. All right. Love Russia. more. Okay. Love more. So now for our next speaker, I don't know if you got to talk to him when you were doing your, oh, now we only have half your head. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Can you um, redo your, okay. Yep. Just bring it back in, um, into focus. And so I'm going to invite, ask, Teal to join us. He is from Leading by Example. Did you get to talk to him when you had done your um, your intro meeting? Did not. Did not. So did he, not. Did not. So he is one of the founders it. of Leading by Example, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, I just I just had that titled as Leading by Example and just a general overview of his story, why mental um, health awareness is important to him and why is it important for black men to be in the mental health space. Leading by Example is a H, what is it called? The HM, 
uh, it's one of the outpatient, the mental, <laughs> health the outpatient mental health, health, center. health centers, health, okay, health centers. Um, and I just thought that that was a good um, mm -hmm. piece for our, us to talk about. And also in his bio, he had talked about um, the importance of really pouring into his relation, his family relationships. So I, I thought he would be a great speaker to talk to about mm -hmm. that. And so I think, okay, I'm gonna invite you again. It says you weren't able to join. So for um, just real quick, you have to be on your cell phone to be able, I'm on my iPad, I don't know. Sometimes Instagram doesn't let me go live from my iPad though. But you have to be on your cell phone to go live with us. So maybe that's what it is. Thank Teresa you, Proctor. Ms. Teresa Proctor. Yeah, we love, love that you. To you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for mm -hmm. supporting Black Mental Health Alliance, you and um, so many of the people that are going through the transformational healing courses always shows up and supports us. So thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. And we're talking True. about a group that's really um, dedicated to their healing. So and healing the community because I think um, that's a whole piece that we forget about our elders really pouring into us and really making sure we understand the the lessons and not just pushing through, breaking stuff as we're going. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Individual and collective healing. Yes, we all need to, to heal individually, but collective healing has got to become a priority yeah. for, for our community. Mm -hmm. So, so can you to join us here? It keeps saying invited, but it keeps kicking them out. When someone joins any... I see oh. something happening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always can't right, have you right, like that. Right, yeah, right. right. <laughs> you got it. Mm. Thank you for joining yeah. us today. Yeah. Pleasure is all mm. mine. Mm. Completely yeah, mine. Yeah, so my name, name's Roxana. We email, met each other, E um, met. So um, I had reached out to one of our partners, um, Ari. He um, was so passionate about your organization, connected us, and oh, I told him about the live, oh and he was so um, awesome to, to, to invite you guys and that you guys even decided to accept it. So we appreciate you coming out today or coming on with us today. Absolutely. Yes, yes, it is a, a, a true treat so, and so a privilege. I did a little bit of internet stalking. I was on your website, reading a little bit about your bio, um, and I was just telling Richard a little bit Very about good. it, that um, you're one of the founders of Leading by Example. You've been born and raised in Baltimore, so I know that yes. shaped a lot of why you're doing the work you're doing and where you're doing it. So um, I, I just wanted to introduce you to Richard Rowe. He is a Black Mental Health Alliance consultant. He has been, guess what? He's been executive yeah. director. He's been the board president. I keep president saying that, but I haven't been MJ. executive director. I've been you know, board president and on the board, but never an executive director. Oh, but, I thought you but, were. But, but yeah. I've, been around for, I've been around for a long time, so he thinks I've basically covered all the bases. But, but Brother Till and I know each other, Roxanne. We know each other from oh, okay, okay. work. At least we know each other. I don't know all the special things about him. I'm hoping to really um, get to know him yeah, more, get to know him better. Yeah. You know, but but I, I'm messing up. Yeah. But oh, again, no. Brother Till, Brother Till, it's a, it's a pleasure and an honor, brother, to have you on. As you well know, we know some great people that have crossed our paths uh, that have helped to elevate the work that we are currently doing and past work. So again, man, I'm glad that Roxanne reached out to you all. But if I had a first question to ask, yes, you can talk a little bit about yourself and how you came to, to where where you are now to be who you are. But is the name of the of the of the agency, you know, leading by example is such a critical name for an agency, man. Because mm. we talk all the time. Mm. You know, but you are leading, we talk and we talk yes. to ask people to, to follow us just by our talk. But you all have added something very important yes. to that title. We are an example yes. of how we should move about, how we should interface with one another, how we should basically build strong, healthy, uh, confident 
you know, uh, young men and young women in our families, how we should build strong families. That's what you all are all about. So I've asked but probably three questions in that one. But talk a little bit about yourself and then talk about some of the things, brother, that you can help enlighten us, provide your insight and how we can become better and, and, and become great. Because that's the work that you all are doing, brother. Go right ahead. Yes. Well, I, I would be uh, remiss, Barbara Richard, if I, I didn't first mm. open by thank you uh, as one of the elders who have blazed the trail uh, and demonstrated an example for me as a 21, 22-year-old mm. uh, kid coming out of Baltimore mm. City, graduating from Southern High School, uh, and the first person in my family to go to college. Uh, all that love in my community and all of that love in my family um, undergirded my desire to, to step out of my community and to go to seek uh, yet another way uh, to come back with some solutions mm -hmm. for what we saw going on <laughs> over there on the that far from Old Town Ball, man. Right, right. Mm -hmm. There was a lot going on. And so um, uh, when I went away to school, uh, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. But uh, when I did, I uh, met with my advisor during freshman year. She said uh, that I would need to choose a major that would prepare me for law school. And she went through a, a litany of majors, but she, she mentioned sociology, which I had never heard of before. Um, and, it, and it intrigued me and I asked her what it was and she told me what it was. And, and interestingly enough, I had an epiphany because as I was growing up in my neighborhood, um, around all that love, I saw my family trying to figure it out. I saw my friends trying to figure it out. Um, and in the process of figuring it out, um, we were all trying to cope with a mm. whole bunch of trauma, pain, uh, disruption mm -hmm. of our heart, disruption of our um, and we were doing things that um, was a helping us to cope with those circumstances and those right. conditions. And they were unhealthy. You know, they were taking my friends. They were taking, they were taking my family members. Um, and I was just uh, wanted to find out why this was happening. And when she explained to me what sociology was, which was the study of all of these things and, and how people um, are together and how they figure it out together, I thought that was the, the best path for me. So I did that. Um, and when I gra graduated from uh, college, I came back home because I was committed to going back into the community where I was from uh, to bring what I learned and to try to make a difference. And then in that process, I went to work for Head Start, uh, which was my first job as a family coordinator. I was down uh, mm. uh, Lexington mm. Terrace wow. Projects. <laughs> I had to walk up down the steps in the projects, knocking on doors to find three-year-old, four-year-old babies uh, to register them and sign them up for, for Head Start. Mm -hmm. And as the family services coordinator, I had to find support services and auxiliary services in addition to the enriched educational um, uh, piece that they had for the, for, the, for the preschool. I was working with the parents mm -hmm. to try to help them figure out how to get health care and how how to get their babies uh, fed and how to get their babies uh, to a safe place. And through that process, I came across uh, a mental health consultant who was Mama Jeanette Gregory, um, who was doing uh, uh, groups with the parents, parent groups. And I was the person who was responsible for getting the parents there. And so I got to indirectly sit mm -hmm. under her mm -hmm. healing power and her teaching uh, from that, what I recognized was that as a 22, 23-year-old Black man in Baltimore, I had only just scratched the surface. So many things were, were revealed. And one of the main things that were revealed to me during that time was that much of what I was endeavoring to do as a mission was the result of teaching and wisdom from my father, uh, mm -hmm. which was invaluable. But the things that I was aspiring to do in B, he was not able to do it. So he couldn't be a living, breathing example. And so I found for other men who were in my community who had embodied or was able to walk out these principles, and I couldn't find them. And I began to feel somewhat discouraged as a young man and almost um, um, like this was an obstacle that was unsurmountable. But then it occurred to me that, wow, if it came to me, it's for me to do. I got to become uh, the very thing that I'm saying I'm looking for in my community, that's where my work um, and 
so I decided to go back to graduate school um, and to uh, pursue my master's in social work, which is what I did. Uh, and once completing that work, I, I went on to uh, work in treatment foster care, uh, where I was able to have a, a more direct effect and impact on family uh, uh, family strengthening and also making sure that um, we were tending to uh, these families in a, in a real mm -hmm. authentic, genuine way toward healing. Look like us not asking them to just come to our air conditioned offices, mm -hmm. get on two and three buses, have four appointments while still trying to manage their baby and all of the, all of the things that are going on in their life. We chose as professionals, as clinicians to go where they mm -hmm. are in the neighborhood, to sit on their steps, to do strengthening sessions and family work in their living rooms and to help them to, to be reunited with their families. And there, um, to make a long story <laughs> a little shorter, um, what, uh, this was a nonprofit program and we were, um, um, I, I had gotten to uh, an upper management level where I was the chief operating officer for this organization, which then took me more into administrative work. And, and one of the biggest obstacles for us during that time was to, to shore up mm. and ensure funding so that we could do this special and unique work. And the work that we were doing to try to make sure funding was present uh, was a work that began to consume me and consume most of the administrative process where we began pampering funders and, and was not able to spend the kind of time that was necessary right. actually providing a service. And I think something was wrong with that. And so um, at that point, I was working with uh, my business partner. We were both younger men at the time. We were both exploring what is the next frontier? What is the next level for us in serving our community? And we determined that we wanted to start an institution mm -hmm. under the banner Leading by Example. And the fundamental mission would be he and I would have to be the first partakers of actually becoming the very model of health, holistic health, that we're saying we want to promote and teach and help others to achieve. That means that we are strong mm -hmm. fathers. That means that we are committed and strong. That means that every day we will wake up with our lives committed to um, going in our community to make a difference and to teach and to heal. And with he and I starting it, uh, we wanted to do that with uh, community-based wraparound services. So that's how we started. We started, we put our little suit jackets on and went around, started knocking <laughs> our little flies and brochures. Everybody know that we were here and we got a pivotal meeting um, uh, with a with an outpatient mental health clinic that was in Dundalk. Um, and, 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 and there was one clinician, supervising clinician there who said she was willing to take a chance with us with about five clients. Um, and then we invested everything in those five clients and we built. And so from there, what we've done is we've built an, a um, multifaceted behavioral health organization um, that is, and I, I say behavioral health because we're focused on mental health as well as somatic physical health, because we understand both mm -hmm. of those work mm -hmm. hand in hand. I mean, people having mental health issues also have concurring um, um, conditions and, and, and physical okay. health circumstances that sometimes barriers for them to be able to really address and work on treatment plans for their mental health, whether it's diabetes, whether it's high blood pressure. Uh, if you're not taking care of yourself and, and engaging in that preventive care, um, that could cause you to get sick, and now you're cycling in and out of mer emergency rooms. You not you can't go to work regularly. You lose your job. You yeah. know that is exacerbating your depression. So we wanted to put together uh, a multifaceted continuum of services that are not only pr provided that community-based work, and and then also provided the therapy. But we also wanted to have targeted case management, which we have the targeted case management contract uh, for Baltimore City, as well as Baltimore County and Harford County for adults. Um, and we also added a health home to our continuum of services, which allows us now to have mental health professionals working on a team, physical health professionals in the, work, in, in the way of nurses and nurse practitioners who at the phase assessment. Not only are we uh, looking at what's happening with your mental health, but your physical health as well. Um, so we're, we're continuing to do that wraparound work, and we're very excited about it. And we just wow. got a new contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got a new contract mm. to provide residential mm. rehabilitation. So we've just been contracted uh, to provide eight beds 
which there's, it's a huge issue right now, not only in uh, Baltimore, but in the entire state of having appropriate level services uh, for residential care for our young people who are transitional age youth, um, many of them coming out of foster care. And, and what a lot of people don't know is that many of the young people that we see on the, uh, in the community who are homeless, they, many of them are foster children who were not able to successfully make that transition from foster care to independence. And so I um, want to be a solution to that. They're, they're, our, our emergency rooms are literally bursting at the scene uh, with our young people who should be in more, um, um, uh, should be in more tailored care to their needs. But because these services are, are not widely available and because the funding is not all the way there, always there for the kind of support that they need, what we find is they're being treated by emergency facilities and in, in, in hospital uh, stays uh, where they really should be getting uh, a different kind of support. So I know I'm, no, I'm going when I can go on and on, is, on and on. Yeah, that's this is excellent. Roxanna may want to chime in, but again, brother, we we thank you and um, praise you all, man, because I mean your your uh, organization, your your organization, uh, or your agency is no longer just you and your partner you know, that basically started um, doing this work. But I'm looking at, uh, I have looked at your website and there's a team of folks now, man. You have, I don't know how many folks on your staff right now, but you have a clinical team, you have uh, other team members yes. that, that we know you could lift up and, and talk about. But we both know, Roxanne and I and Andrea, our executive director knows that this is just the first of many interviews that we hope we can have with you. Uh, brother and your team, man, because again, we need to learn more about the really on the ground work that you all are doing. You all are saving lives, man. Yeah. You are transforming lives. You all are basically uh, enhancing our mental health on many, many levels, our physical health on many, many levels. And so we need to extend this conversation, uh, have an extended conversation with you at some point, and we will. Uh, but but in a few minutes that we have left, and I think we only have about five or six minutes left before we go on to our next guest. Uh, and we again thank everybody for joining the Black Men Health Alliance on this marathon. We're glad that Roxana uh, put helped put all this together uh, under the guidance of, of again Andrew Brown, our executive director, because we know we need yeah. to be having these conversations, man. And and again, I want you in a few minutes that we have left. Uh, Brother Teo, you know, what is the good news, man? What What is the good news? You've shared some of that in terms of you all now exist and not just exist on a survival level, but you all are thriving and That's building. I know you all have, what, three locations yeah. now? What, what is the, the tally on locations? Uh, yeah, we, we have a brand new facility in Baltimore City, which Beautiful. we're extremely proud of. That's a that's really a full circle, state of the art, five star facility. Mm. Um, that's right in the neighborhood where I grew up, right there on Biddle Street, uh, right next door to Baltimore wow. City Department of Social oh, yeah. Services on Biddle Street. Literally, their door, door is five feet away. Critical location. From there. Critical we're, location. We're right there. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. And we also have an office in White Marsh, which is our, our headquarter office. And we have an office in Hartford County. Uh, and we just uh, acquired two two homes. Uh, side by side, which we'll be utilizing in Baltimore City, right there on Barkley, uh, right off the of North Avenue, where we'll be providing the uh, residential rehab. So uh, th that's extremely good news. We we have a lot to be excited about, um, and we know that there's a, a a tremendous amount of positive energy coming from our staff. Um, and we 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 resolved ourselves from the very beginning that we wanted to partner with the state, with the regulatory bodies, and with the legislature. Uh, we wanted to be partners with them in finding out solutions. And, and as a result, uh, from the very beginning, we started in 2009, from the very beginning, uh, not only did we endeavor to do the work, but we wanted to be uh, active on the policy front because we wanted to have a seat at the table uh, when discussions were being had about funding uh, and regulations. And so we worked through Community Behavioral Health, which is a network organization, um, mm -hmm. to do that advocacy work as well. So it's a lot of very, very positive uh, and powerful work that is happening around the mental health of our community. And we're just ecstatic to be a part so of you it. You have a lot of congratulations in the, the chat. Um, David Miller is on and he said, important work. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, that's my brother. That's my brother. That's my, mm -hmm. that's my dad. Mark right 1911 up, said, Teal is a community goat. Ooh. Ooh, Andrea, you, that feels so um, our executive yeah, director, said, we're going to visit the Baltimore City location. And thank you for your passion and work. Oh. Absolutely. And we look forward to having you and hosting you and sharing our experiences with you there. And Brother yes. T, you know, we have, yes. to, we have to be beyond talking about, you know, um, the, the good news and the good work you, you all are doing, man. We've got to join forces uh, on a, n a number of different occasions to simply, you know, collaborate on, on some of the things that we're all doing. And because that's how we like to roll, man. I know that's how you all like to show up as well. How do we do this work together? Oh, yeah. That's right. Absolutely. That's right, because I mean, I mean, we had, I mean, I know you guys have been talking about the work you've been doing extensively and, uh, you know, just with the training and the teaching that you're doing, I know that we can be uh, huge benefactors of that. Um, our staff being mm -hmm. able to receive that information, and to receive cultivation enrichment so i know we we will be partnering going for and this very conversation right here is the, is the result of what we said Precisely. we wanted to do when we Precisely. talked uh, about a rich couple of months love it love it love it love it man yeah, folks i mean Roxanne, i guess folks could can get in touch with you with with leading by example by going to your website give that address or give in contact information because folks are eager yeah. man to learn more yeah. about you or give airy is it Ari or Ari our best? Oh, yeah. You know, because you know he's he's been instrumental in helping yeah, to connect us and so forth. Sure we connect. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, our website is leading by example LLC dot com. Uh, on Instagram, we're LBE Maryland. Of course, you can hit my Instagram, ask Teal. Um, and, and there, I think you can get just about uh, everything you need. I, yeah. I think our website is yeah, very comprehensive, lot, very proud it's of it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's this comment here, uh, Roxanne? Does Till offer visits for other young Black men in the field of mental health? Oh. Do I offer visits? Like, am I doing I clinical yes, work? I don't know for certain. Um, Ivan, can you um, answer if um, what just be specific about what's the offer for visits so that we can um, answer your question? Do you have any books so I can't, that you wrote? Oh uh, boy, boy, man, that that that's one that's 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 like a piece of grass that's pricking my leg to go ahead and do it. I well, well, David, David knows going to push you, brother. So if you if you know David, you if you if you are. If you if okay. confront it with okay. David, David's going to make you write that book, brother. So just like, know that, okay? Wait, that's just right. Put that out there, and I, I, I out to my brother to, for him to coach me and 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 uh, mentor me with with doing that for the first time. But yes, that's definitely within on my list of things to do. Uh, Leading by example has available um, um, openings for therapy for assessments. Uh, we we've recently brought on um, new prescribers, so we we have for, for assessment across the board. We have availability, so reach out to us, uh, and we can't wait to meet you, link with you, and provide a service to you that is of sufficient quality. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. Unfor unfortunately, we are out of time. But this has been this has been an amazing That's conversation as we knew it would be, and we applaud you all for the excellent work that you all are doing, for you all commitment to our community, to our Thank people, you. man. And we know that this is just the beginning. Of, of ongoing conversations with leading by example a premier you know uh, mental health and behavioral health organization that's doing important work life-saving work great work in our community so we applaud you again brother thank you so much for being part of our conversation really quick be well be safe my man give our best respect. Said, um, my son is going to grad school for mental health he's interested in having a visit at one of his facilities i don't know um okay yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a huge part of what we're doing with our um, academy. Okay. We want to we want to be a bridge from that from that uh, theory to practice, and we want to get more young people engaged in and having first experiences with what yeah. what they're reading in those books and those papers they're writing, what they like in real life, and how you really walk it out. So yes, yeah, I would please say, reach, reach out, out to, to the me, Instagram, brother. Um, visit the website. I, I would love to do. We, we feel and love your passion, sir. We feel and love it, man. So <laughs> thank you again. Be well, be safe, man, to you and yours. And we will be talking to you all again yes. soon, man. Okay? Yes. And then Richard will be back yeah. on at 7.
Um, Andrea Brown is going to restart our live with Donetta. And I think you guys are going to love it. Caregiving while black. Mm. <laughs> mm, that's right. That's right. Mm. We'll so, be talking to David Miller too. Yeah, yes, at seven, right? At seven. Okay. And then so we'll be back on at seven. Um, I'm actually going to go do a walk outside while I'm listening. And hopefully, I keep saying, get your steps in. Are you getting your steps in, Richard? Yes, yes, I am. I have <laughs> foot surgery. That's what so you now, do in, in Andrew, but yeah. Uh, yeah going now back that my foot to... is back to the regular, I, I appreciate it so much. I got to use it a lot. I got to get my steps in. I can see it. I can see it. it, it I can feel it and see it. Uh, but that's, that's all good. That's our self-care, radical self-care that we need to yeah. engage in. Thank you, Roxanne. I'll see you back. Right. I'll, I'll be Love back. You. On see seven. you at okay, seven. We'll be back. All Thank right, you. You guys stay mm -hmm. on. Andre will be back on right now.